Electroheads, on the last day of February, I did what most people do. I woke up and I checked the news. But this wasn't a normal scroll until you're late for work kind of day. Actually, that's a lie. I pride myself on punctuality. This time, I was hit with an article with the title, Ministers to Consult on Doubling Legal Wattage of Electric Bike Motors. I rubbed my bleary eyes to make sure I wasn't seeing things. Damn, I thought. Now, I don't know about you, but the news of the consultation seemed to come out of nowhere. But you know what should be a given? You hitting that subscribe button. Hit it, click that bell icon and stay up to date with all the latest e-ride news, reviews and Electroheads content. So the Department for Transport officially launched the consultation on Thursday, February the 29th. Now shout out to all you leap year babies. The DFT were making their own leap with a proposal to look at changing the maximum allowable power of an e-bike motor from 250 watts to 500 watts. The article stated another possible move is to allow e-bikes to be powered by a throttle. Currently, throttles without any pedal assist are allowed with a max 4 miles per hour speed cap, mainly marketed as a walk assist. Now, it's not believed that the current legal speed limit of 15.5 miles per hour will increase. If you want to hear some thoughts on that, then you can watch this video right here on why I actually do want faster speed caps. But it must be said there are arguments against that cover 20 miles per hour being a lot more energy to dissipate if you fall off compared to 15.5 miles per hour. An increase of speed could also mean obligatory helmet use, which has been proven in other countries to reduce the amount of people that cycle. But back to the motors regulation. Essentially, this could have a huge impact on e-bikers, other road users, the industry and beyond. So there are some important questions and comments raised in this article that I need to talk through. I've also been chatting with Nick from Boost and Mark from Pedabel to get some more perspective and insight. So you'll see them pop up along the way. So if that sounds good, then stick around. Now, my initial response when I first saw the headline was, what? And then, great, 250 watts, it's adequate. And from the amount of comments I get from you lot at home, I know that for heavier folk, for those who live in hillier lands and e-cargo users, 250 watts just doesn't really cut it. But having spoken to a few contacts in the industry, an allowance for 500 watts is not that simple. In the Guardian article, the Bicycle Association are references having concerns that the 500 watt motor allowance will make the bikes quicker, more powerful and heavier because a bigger battery will be required, making it more dangerous in crashes. If the cap goes from 250 watts to 500 watts, there are concerns that this also risks having to place electric bikes into a whole new category that is more akin to a motorcycle than a bike. Doing this means the potential of needing training, a driving license, insurance, registration, it could make e-bikes far less accessible. But let's put the added power into perspective. It's argued that whilst 250 watts is about the level of power a human could produce with their legs, 500 watts is a lot more. Take a 50cc moped, which is, let's say, a very entry-level motorbike. You do need to have a driving license and take a CBT course, and they can reach a top speed of up to 28 miles per hour. Now, its power is around two to four horsepower. This can go up a little bit more depending on what model and make that you get. 500 what electric motor is equivalent to 0.7 horsepower. So 500 watts is at the very least about a quarter of the power of a 50cc moped and typically weighs about a quarter too. So that gives you an idea in terms of relation to power. But something else to consider is how much power is actually being outputted because when we talk about wattage caps, we have to take into account that this is actually talking about nominal power, which means the motor is designed to survive running at 250 watts all day long. But the physics side of things means you can put a lot of power temporarily through a motor and it won't melt, preserving your e-bike. So in reality, your 250 watt motor is most likely doing more already. And a 500 watt motor generally will do even more. And when you consider that there are e-bike owners who take liberties and hack the bike software to remove the 15.5 mile per hour speed limiter, could now have access to a more powerful and generally heavier bike, we can all appreciate that this raises concerns. How is this gonna be policed? It will be very difficult to do so. And so therefore a more stringent approach of introducing courses or licenses could be rolled out to try to make it harder for those who abuse the rules. And looking at it from a manufacturer's perspective, I was chatting to Nick from Boost Bikes who makes a very valid point. Adding 500 watts to the options creates a market where manufacturers will only get sales if they sell 500 watts. Well, yeah, it, it, unlike batteries where you get a penalty where the bigger battery is gonna be heavier, 
media. I think everyone would always just sell 500 watt motors and they're generally bigger motors, which just kind of means that your brakes need to be bigger, your bike needs to be bigger. And so the whole thing just moves away from lightweight mobility towards actually being a bit more like a motorbike. The motors get larger, the batteries get larger and the bikes have to get larger and stronger. And for Boost in particular, you create conversion kits. What does that mean for you guys? And because already you're having to apply these motors onto bikes that technically haven't been built to become electrified. So what does that mean for you? Yeah, so the bikes have been built to a certain strength standard and the additional power and weight that you add to a bike with a conversion system is the same or less that a rider would be able to add. So it doesn't feel like you're adding anything different to what the bike was designed for. But I mean, 500 watts is a lot more power than most people can put out through their legs. And that is going to put more strain on onto a bike, which would probably then cause you to look at how strong the bike was. So it has a, it has a ripple on effect with the strength of the overall bike. It could also create a serious problem if the UK diverges from the EU standard. Right now, we have the same rules and regulations as the EU for e-bikes, but here in the UK, there's no compliance testing to speak of. So there's a question of how anyone would actually be able to put their bigger powered EAPC through any sort of testing. So yeah, if you want to test a bike in the UK at the moment, if you're a local manufacturer, you could only use to be able to get it done in Portugal and Germany. If you want to get a frame tested, you have to go to Germany and their standards will be built around the European view of what an electric bike or assisted bike is, which is probably going to remain 250 watts. I don't see any European ambition to change change this. So I don't entirely know how you would qualify with who would actually do the testing for these bikes if the power was to be increased. I think the overall thing is that it, you change something small like a number, but it just has a it has a whole knock on effect with so many different parts of the supply chain of the products that you're working with. I'm trying to work with a few other manufacturers on a, a kind of cooperative around how we can do a degree of testing in the UK, because at the moment it, it makes it very small for low volume frame builders to actually test their test their bike. You're looking at 10,000 euros every time you want to test a frame. So it's a it's not it's not a trivial amount of money. And as we've seen recently with cargo bike manufacturers, it is important that things are tested because otherwise you end up with recalls that's actually very bad for the industry. So, you know, testing is important. The UK could do with more testing so we can actually start manufacturing stuff here. We need testing to make sure that these e-rides are built well and comply with the rules. And then there's concerns about bigger batteries creating bigger fires. Naturally, a 500 watt motor will need more power, which will mean the bike will be more expensive, which in turn could encourage more people to look for cheap third party options that are the main cause in the rise of e-ride fires. But as I said from the start, you cannot deny that there is a need for more powerful motors, for the hillier terrains, heavier riders, and e-cargo bikes, electric delivery vehicles, tandems, and recumbents. I think um, it's always good to see the government engaging with e-bikes and the APCs because there is a lot of there's a lot of cases where the government doesn't take a lead on this. So the fact that they are asking for consultations and engagement is is positive. I, I don't see this one becoming legislation anytime soon, but it's definitely interesting to see it brings focus to the industry. And I think that in itself is a really positive thing. If you're still here, by the way, you should definitely hit that like button and you should absolutely subscribe. Only the cool kids subscribe to Electrohead, so. <laughs> Don't be left behind. But on the topic of a potential move to allow throttles, this throws up a lot of for and against. I think it's a good thing, uh, if anything, because it's good that they're actually looking at the industry, which is what it needs. For those who have a physical impairment, that means they rely on a throttle and the current four miles per hour cap just it isn't enough. There are companies who are already finding their way around those rules, like Pedibal. Just because you can't mass produce throttle e-bikes doesn't mean you can't take each bike to the DVSA to get it tested and certified. And that's exactly what Pedibal does. I'll be doing a video on their cruiser and folder e-bike models in the months to come, so keep an eye out for those. Each bike you take has to be booked in, tested, take to the testing station. They run it through a test like an MOT. They check certain specifics of the bike. They check the specification. The weight comes into this factor. It's all tested. The brakes are tested. They have it on the, on the rolling rolling roads. It's tested as if it was a, a motor vehicle. And then, and then they issue a certificate once it's passed all those elements. But there is a market for throttle bikes and brands like Pedabout, and they're responding to that. We find our product and the feedback we've been given 
has been benefited by so many riders riders that have limited functionality regards to mobility and there's so many of our, our trust pilot pages come up where they they think it's fantastic and it's it's got them confidence to go back onto a bike and it's obviously the the health benefits are there there straight away which is fantastic obviously our bike at the moment meets the 250 watt requirement meets the 15 and a half miles an hour requirements they're, they're the two key factors and then with the twist and go through it's the eu legislation that obviously limits it to six kilometers an hour but the uk doesn't set any specifics around the type of throttle or any parameters around the throttle that can do that which is with the testing and the certification makes that fine to use but as you can see there are a lot of angles on this speaking to nick and to mark it's just not as simple as what 7am Elish thought it could be remember this is at the consultation stage so a very long way from anything actually changing and would require a lot of legislative change i'd love to hear your comments on this one let me know down below and i will of course keep you updated when i hear more but for now guys peace